Hopefully we're not lagging. I don't know. I'm checking the internet. It says that I'm. It says that I'm. I got fast internet. It says that I should be able to stream. I tried to hotspot to my phone and it wasn't. It wasn't as good as what I got. Um, the speed test was faster yes, than than before we started. I don't know. We streamed on Tuesday. It wasn't laggy on Tuesday, was it? When you pull up the live, down at the bottom, there's a chat. Yeah, it's on. Is it laggy? No, not right now. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. How are we, guys? Uh, it's okay Raymond for Castillo now. says it's uh, it's okay for now. It's okay for now. All right. Well. Okay. We'll see what happens, kid. I tried to hotspot the phone. It didn't work. I don't know. I need to get a Starlink. How much is a Starlink? Who can send me a Starlink? I don't know. Who's gonna sponsor a Starlink for Bobby? Oh, uh, I think we would need two. It's good for me. No lag. Thank you, John. Thank you, Raymond. Thanks, John. Wow, Brian Williams Jr. in the comments, huh? That's I haven't seen that. I don't know if I've seen hey, that. Hey, Bobby, yes, my sir. wife, she uh, and I know she looked this up because for our our camper, it's six hundred for the equipment and then like a hundred something a month. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, hey, I think we need to get a little bigger, you know. <laughs> Hundred a month, kid, for fucking Wi-Fi for Starlink. All internet. right, well, I guess we're six hundred go... for the equipment. I guess we're gonna go with a laggy video then. Huh? <laughs> 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 no, it's gonna be it's gonna be a cheaper way, like a little hotspot or something. Like I get a little, oh. I don't know. If we get laggy, let or me two. know. We're really sorry. I'm doing the best that we can. Let's give something away and cheer everybody up. What do you got, Brian? You want to give something away, Bri? Yeah. Hmm? You want to give something away, cheer everybody up? Yeah, man, back? let's do that. Let's do that. So let's start with some high-speed dyes. High-speed dyes? Let's go. If you get them, you have to high report speed. back as you use them, how they're working, how they're holding up. We want videos. We want feedback. If you get something, yeah, from, we want some if videos, you get something some from Brian, we definitely want feedback, and we greatly would appreciate a video. We would love a video. So I I sent these to uh, a fitter in Georgia. He used them for a very long time. Loved them. And you got a pair as well, Bobby, didn't you? What is it? Didn't you get some dyes? No, I got um, I got outstanding jaws that I haven't got to use yet, but I'm gonna get to use them. Oh, and they go okay. on they go on the chuck of the machine, and they sit on the outside of the chuck where you actually put the pipe into, and then you can open it up into larger diameter pipes, such as 3-inch, 4-inch, 6-inch, and it will, you open the chuck up, and these will grab the interior of the pipe, and then you could, like, you could spin 6-inch on your 300 machine. They're really wow, cool. Wow, so you could use that for a threader. You could, you could, like, put a piece of 6-inch on the, on the threading machine, and then have oh. someone with a, with a four-wheel cutter cutting it. What are you yeah. laughing at, Chris? John on here saying, Chris, how about a giveaway on them guns? Oh, yeah. Kid. I want that top one, dog. What you got? Yeah. Send it with a, with 30 in there. 150 for the mobile and 120 for residential. Are they one to two dies, Bri? They got to be. They yeah, are. They're going to give away halves, right? They're one to two dies. High That's speed dies. Universal. Right. What are you going to do? You're going to ask like a, um, a paragraph I'm question? Ask a question? Can't you just ask, like ask, a, a question. ask an easy one? Like your last question. Hey, hey last how time. about you let me handle this? <gasps> okay. okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, All sir. Right. <laughs> high, templer, how, high temperature <laughs> sprinklers must be tested as per what below mentioned interval? A, three years. B, five years. C, 15. D, 20. First answer, get some high speed dies. Damn son. Ooh, how we doing? Boom. That's it. Is it it's like a there's like, like a delay, you know? We're we're streaming live. Yeah, there's so a delay. It, yeah, it's I like know. they're they're hearing I'm you now. Here. They're hearing you now, and then they're gonna type it, and then now they're sending it, and then and now it's coming through the stratosphere, and we're gonna get like whoever's got the fastest internet's gonna be the first comment. And then like yeah. twenty hey, uh, and then all right, twenty. So I got a comment. question. I got a question. Uh, yeah. let's see. Uh, someone said B. Mike, Mike Z. Z. That's right. Five years. Mike B. Z. Ben Mike says five. Z. Mike Z. That's it. Mike Z is the winner. Mike, if you could get with, uh, you could send your information to dope and tape at gmail.com and, uh, and I'll write it down. If you can get it to me tonight, I can, I could put it in the order and then, uh, get it to you tomorrow. Well, ship it out tomorrow. So, uh, Get with me, dopeandtape at gmail.com. 
Send your, another, that was passed. Just send your, send your mailing address, uh, Mike, please. Thank you. What else you got, kid? First name, last name, mailing address. Let's see here. Oh, the trick tray. This I, is the one you love. I saw you, Ben. You said five. You were just you were second. Dude, you that thing is, that thing is sick. That thing is sick. So this goes on a three. You know, you explain it, Bobby. It, go, go, it goes right on the top of your threading machine. Uh, those two bars that Brian has that are hanging on the bottom, they 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 slide right into the back side of the of the bars of the machine bars, and you can now you can pull that thing so it's closer to you, or you can push it away from you. And I think that's is that why we call it trick. I'm not sure, but that's yo, right. You, that's the yo, trick. You could fit hella shit on that thing. I I nipples, had an dope, idea that tape, this would be great you want. for nipples. Mad when nipples. you're just making nipples, yep, a rag, all your stuff goes right on there. All the stuff that's usually like you usually guys will take a piece of threaded rod and they put it in the bar in the back. That's where your dope goes, and that right there is efficiency. There's a little table, and if you get the if you get the oiler tray table as well, right, that goes on the on the on the middle landing of your machine, and it lifts your oil tray 18 inches off of the ground and gets it closer, which creates less splatter and then you have also the all thing. that room behind the oiler to fit wherever you want to put, put down there more right you stuff, put some tools kid. down Hell there some yeah. more fittings and i <laughs> hey uh bobby i'm gonna i'm gonna give one of those away Yo, tonight too this is your buddy rictus p rictus that's always in here talking about hot chicks yeah, yeah. huh is <laughs> yeah, that really hot your, chicks are hot huh? is that your buddy yeah yeah oh okay. we've had a great time we got kicked out of a hooters years ago mm -hmm. together he always uh, says that. He comes in a, here. He yeah. says hot chicks are hot. Why are there no hot chicks in the sprinkler industry? Yo, there's some. There's some hot chicks. We've some. had them on the show. Where, you got really? you to you venture around the sprinkler industry, bubs. Is there? <laughs> is there really? Yeah. No, I think there's like six. Nowhere you know? I've been. I've been all over the country, but whatever. <laughs> You're a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm it's waiting. usually big old fat guys, and they they. You know, I'm waiting for that up, bottom uh, tray. Will it work on the rigid 300? Hell yeah, Raymond, and it's available yeah, right it, now. It's it's available. It's, we'll ship it tomorrow. What do you need? Yeah, I have it. I have it with hot me tonight. Chicks. Chris looks hot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's Matt Dunn. He's uh, a. <laughs> he's the Southeast <laughs> Regional Manager for Fire Troll, the fire pump controller company. Yo, yo, Rick, this has got oh, some good cool. one-liners, kid. <laughs> Less rod and more nipples. <laughs> 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 that's fucking good we'll do thanks fellas all right, thank you mike question. all right hit us with the question kid damn i should For put on extra... uh hold on hold on should i put on uh let me play who wants to be a millionaire music all right well you better be quick with it all right just, i'll do it on the next one just do this one i'll get right. ready for the next one for an extra hazard occupancy where the hydraulically calculated system water flow is monitored at an approved and Constantly attended location, the required water supply duration is too long. A, 30 minutes, B, 60 minutes, C, 90 minutes, D, 120 minutes. That's bad luck. Oh, let's see if I shut this. And shut Chats that. are still coming in, but shut yeah, there's nothing. Oh, there we go. It's back. Boom. All right. Is it good? Awesome. Is it good or is it not good? Sometimes there's a little, you know, it's Wi-Fi internet. The answer is hot chicks are hot. <laughs> <laughs> Need to hear some pump talk from Chris. We lagged again, yo. All right, we had Raymond at D, JB had 90, Becky had 90, Ben had 60, Al had A. Back. Becky right. was right. All right, we're back. Uh, Jeremy Box got it first, though. Sorry, Becky. Boom. And what was it? What are we giving away? What are you giving away? What is Arco giving away? The trick tray. The trick tray. Hell yeah. Yeah, so JB's going to get a dope and tape and a trick tray. We need a video of the dope and the tape on the trick tray doing tricks. What do you think, I JB? I can get that right tomorrow. Some pink tape. Some pink tape. Pink tape. So I love that tray. No, the tray is great. Great. I'm not just hey, saying that. Hey, I, I uh, literally just got four of them. Like I have one. I just put one on the machine. Well, now before you get anything, you gotta call me. I know. I think I still want to call Daryl, kid. I All talk right? to you enough. Like Daryl's my Arco <laughs> guy. No, can I still call Daryl? You can do whatever you want, man. All right. I'll, maybe I'll switch back and forth. I'm just gonna call Russ. Go right over both of you. 
Yeah, I'll decently my... like you still. I mean, nothing's going to change. <laughs> until you draw, until you hand draw a picture of my face and print it and mail them to me, he's just like not on Russ's level. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, uh, Chris, all right, I, I have a I have a pump question. When you're testing fire pumps and you're running hoses uh, to you know pump testing equipment, all the all of the calcs that you get from all of the different equipment are all on 25 foot hoses. The problem is no one really uses 25 foot hoses. They use hundred foot hoses. They had to get through the landscaping and try not to mess up rocks and, and uh, pine straw and all that other stuff. But they're not true readings, correct? There is some, I guess, differentiate. What's the word I'm yeah, looking for? So, anyway, we'll run with that before I try to figure out that word. Um, <laughs> like we talked about before, uh, before we went live, um, obviously the best way to do it is open atmosphere because you're right at the test header. Uh, so you're going to get the most accurate readings right from the test header. The further you go out, you have to calculate uh, using whichever device is coefficient that they put in place. And um, I know... I know Riptide has it on their website. They have their charts on their website and Hose Monster does and Flow Buster does. Um, but uh, I know for sure Hose Monster with their new software, you're able to put in how much hose you're using and it does all the calculations for you. You're putting in uh, all of your readings right there. The cool thing is they have, and I, I know when we met with the guys from Riptide, they're coming out with the same thing. But they have those wireless transducers now. They're really expensive, but uh, from what we've seen, they're stupid accurate. Um, uh, it's it, it's crazy. I want to get a set myself. Uh, we're looking to possibly donate a pump to Hose Monster's new training lab. So maybe, maybe I consider a little trade, huh? Drug deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's cool, man. Uh, but yeah, so if you go like before. Um, we used to have these old slide charts uh, back in the day when we were just using pedo tubes and play pipes or, uh, you know. We, I we had one of those. I had a slide chart. Yeah. But back in the day, you used to have to do the math. And, I, you know, I haven't had to manually do the math in years. Um, but you have to go based off of whichever company's coefficient is published. Like you can't use somebody else's for like riptides. I've been told that riptide and hose monsters coefficient that they use to calculate their pressures are two different ones. And really it shouldn't be that way, but uh, I think they've been talking to each other about it. What about less than 20 PSI at inlet from your boy, Ben? So, okay. I, I had this discussion down in Florida when I was teaching and I kind of raised some eyebrows about this answer. Keep in mind, I work for a fire pump manufacturer. I am employed and I am a salary employee, which means I don't ever really stop working. So I have to give you the factory's answer. The factory will tell you that they do not like to go below 20 PSI. However, NFPA will say differently. You can go below 20 PSI suction pressure that's that's i'm telling you this is suction pressure because if you're pulling from a tank your static pressure is generally going to be around 10 to 15 psi um whereas if you're pulling from city water you're generally much higher than that but there's a lot of municipalities that are lower and i've had sprinkler guys come up to me and tell me that they've tested pumps at negative suction and I can't say that you can do that. I'm I'm not allowed to say that you can do that. Um, but take it's been, that for but what it's, it is. It's been done. Can I say that you can it's do it? It's been done. You want me to say and it for if you, you? If you buy a fire pump, any fire pump that you buy, you're going to get two gauges, right? Your suction and your discharge. And your suction gauge, anyone that you get from a fire pump manufacturer, is going to be a negative 30 to 300 PSI uh, or uh, yeah, negative 30 to 300 PSI suction gauge. It's not a zero to 300 PSI because they do have to account for negative suction. You need to be able to record that. 
Where's the point of suction? Oh, my boy Justin Stallings, the real expert when it comes to fire putt. Hell yeah. Hose Monster published coefficient doesn't He's quite meet their chart. <laughs> they round at the tens place, which gets you with like five GPM or so. I'll say it, Chris. <laughs> Make pay, make make play pipes great again. Where is the point of suction? At the pump. We take like so on every fire pump on the flanges on the suction and discharge. Sorry, the the correct terminology within the pump world is suction and delivery. Um, there's there are ports on the flanges. They're usually like quarter inch. And that's where the manufacturers recommend that you put your gauges because you're going to get the most accurate reading from there. Boom. So I just put my SPP okay. gauges right on that SPP pump, right in those outlets yeah, you're talking boy. about. Dude. Come on. And then I shined. The, then I went to Home Depot and I got a dust. I got a duster and I got Terry cloths and I got some fantastic and I fucking dusted it and scrubbed it. I I'll, love you. I'll send you some I love pictures, you, Bobby. Man. I'll send you're you some pictures. I don't like when they're dusty, man. No way, dude. I, I said something, I, and I teach about it, and I never understand it. As much money as you spend on a fire pump, I mean, some of these fire pumps, like the ones that you did down in Jacksonville, I guarantee you that was six figures in fire pumps. Those two diesels were probably 130, 160, somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe even more than that. It could have been 200,000. They were big. Dang, girl. You spend that much money on a piece of equipment and then people just treat it like shit and they get Shine they it. leave their monster cans or their meth pipes all over it. Freaking <laughs> I, we come into the pump room, Justin knows more than anybody because he's seen some of the worst of the worst. You go in there and you're like, What the fuck? Yeah. Why did <laughs> and, and on the controller, they'll have like a knocked over can of freaking uh liquid cocaine on the damn Coca -Cola. controller and a freaking a, a freaking electrical component and you're like oh my god <laughs> yeah what the yeah I, I see i see that i just need to um we had them tarped for most of the time but then you take the tarps off and you get working in there and shit gets dusty and i like to just i like to just keep them clean and the owners usually the freaking the electricians show. yeah they do make a big mess and the uh pain of my existence my favorite videos on instagram are are justin's when he walks into a fucked up fire pump room man those are my favorite and he's oh like, oh here we go Ryan. We drove six hours for this fucking shit show yes <laughs> yeah if you if you want to get the like this is some of the best content there's a there's a couple really good guys uh don the sprinkler nerd and uh justin stall but his is atlantic fire controls he does fire pump Fridays and his voiceovers to these videos are fucking hilarious. Justin oh, is the best. best friends in the industry. Oh yeah. And I just, I cut Legendary. it up with him and laugh so hard. Yeah. We're, uh, I don't, you gonna, uh, you gonna get us something good tomorrow, Justin? What's the plan? I don't know. Did you, did you give us something last Friday? I'm gonna have to go look kid. I don't know if I remember. It's always oh, the electrician's dude. fault. It really is. It, it really always is. is the electrician's fault. Oh man. They're wire nuts everywhere. Man, that's oh funny. God. I went oh, to a don't. job fair today trying to get some high school kids excited about fire protection. And then there was a group of guys that uh, that came in. They were like, no, we want to be electricians. There's four of them. I said, well, how is your room? Is your room dirty? They're like, no, we cleaned up your room. I was like, it's probably not for you. We can find <laughs> something else. Yeah. <laughs> so messy. Did you um, ask if they were gay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> what is that thing on your right, Bri? On my right? Your right, yeah. This I, guy right I, here? I, yeah, that's your right. Yes, sir. This is a foot vice. A what? So, you'll put a piece of pipe right here, and yeah. then you'll have your wrench, and you'll put your boot here. Half inch? I think it goes up to one oh, inch. Oh, and... any size. Oh, that little thing moves in there? Yeah. Let me see. Push that thing in. See, it goes to half an inch and a quarter. Oh, dang. Huh? Look at that. Yeah. There's a little spring down at the bottom. Keeps tension. And what do you put? You a put pipe? your boot you put a, on it. You lift it pipe, up. You put a pipe on that other end or just that's it? What's that hole right for? Here. What's that hole for on the right side? Right here? Yes, sir. That got threads? What? Oh, this could be inappropriate. Does there's that... a there's a T-bar. There's have... a T-bar that goes in here. Oh, okay. So you put your, your boot on. Boom. Yeah. That's Very I thought cool. you were That's about to was... say something really inappropriate, Brian. 
<laughs> he, lo- he looked at someone for the answer. Brian, do you guys sell <laughs> vice that straps to your bumper? Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's this. So, oh, this is a heavy-duty chain he's vice. got it right there, Jay. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Look yeah, at you just that, mount it right huh? to your bumper. That's awesome. Or a bench or whatever you want. I had one of those on my uh, on my Rubbermaid cart back in the Bean Kid, back in Boston. Who's got that cart? I think Dutch has that. Y'all cart. want a chance to win it? Let's see here. Yeah, can I? I want to win it. Can I? What? Do, all right, ask your. Give us a. Yeah, par- you can answer. Anybody can answer. Give us a paragraph question, kid. Come on, I'm ready. Even 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 Chris can answer. Can't you just like ask us something easy, like what number am I thinking? One to twenty. Boom, and we all just guess a bunch of numbers, or no? Like, who's on the poster to my left? Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> no, no, we can't. His screen hey, is the hey, size uh, of a green of Chris Dilday can answer. <laughs> you can answer. Diesel fire pumps shall run weekly for a minimum of how many minutes? You can repeat it as they're, All right. you know. 20. No. Ben okay. said 20. Boom. Is that the answer? No. No, it's not. Repeat the, repeat the Big question. Big country. Big country, Big country wins. Boom. Okay. Big country wins. Ooh, he beat Ben. Oh, Ben gets Damn twice. it, Ben. Damn it, Ben. You're off by 10. You're my boy, Ben, but what the hell? Do better next time. <laughs> we gotta, see, a lot of people know. People know their facts in here. Levi yeah. went with 10. Hey, I, Big Country, send your information to dopeandtape at gmail.com. I had a chain That vice. way I don't have to rely on Bobby to give it to me. I could. I, hooked, I, I sent that shit right over, kid. Yeah, with no addresses, bro. Hey, I, can we I address- sent you a screenshot of can the DM. You sit there all over the place. Can no, you get no, it no. All com- no. Can you get it together? How, how do you send me stuff? You send you send stuff the worst way. You don't ever just copy and paste. You send screenshots. So that's what I send to you. You get what you give. No, no. You, you just like a sticky get, note with a name, and then I, I sent you a sticky note place. that had everybody's name and what they won, and then I sent you a screenshot of the DM with their address. And like a, my seven year old could have done. We're gonna have to get better that. at this. This is no. what we're gonna do moving forward. Is everybody? Gonna, I love it. Send you, your information to dopeandtape at gmail dot com. Boom! Hey, Don't even involve hey, Bobby. Brian's giving you the shit, not me. Can we address uh, Levi Childs? He was the only one that said ten minutes. Yep. Now the question is, why? Why ten minutes? Why would you only test the pump for ten minutes? Let's see if they know that answer. Boom. Okay. Damn. Oh. Fucking built for this shit, Chris, huh? See, he comes up with questions yeah. on the fly, dog. <laughs> Magic man. Damn, I should have worn my Arco shirt. <laughs> I, got, I got that same shirt and long sleeve. Yeah. Russ told me that I'm There's the only, only person I'm the only person in the continental United States with it. Well, I think me and you, both <laughs> of us. <laughs> I suck at texting. Oh, Ben says it was a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Dope and Tape Show made it. My boy Brent Baxton got it. That's Brent Baxton of Phoenix Pump out in uh, Houston, Texas. Ooh, dang. Got the facts he in there. He got it. Electric fire pump. You test the electric fire pump once a month for 10 minutes. Hell yeah. That's right. Hey, hey, Brent and Bat- Batson. Brent Batson. Brent Batson. They send you an angled pipe wrench. Damn. Is that if he doesn't email you, I'll get you his address. So is it yeah. a, what is it? What kind of jaws does it have, kid? I can't tell from back here. Is it is they are they pipe wrench jaws or are they flat? Yeah, no, they're pipe wrench jaws. Oh, okay. Shout out to Batson. Take that out. That Isn't that cool? cool? That is, that cool. is pretty cool. Was it a fourteen or twelve? Let's see a fourteen. Windings. It's a 14-inch offset. 10 minutes for an electric is to allow the motor warnings to cool down. All right, Brent. That is correct. Mind that is correct. Brent, please send me your information, dopeandtape at gmail.com. Vincent's the only person I've heard actually give uh, the the best answer for that. Because in NFPA, it doesn't say that. It just says 10 minutes for electric once a month, um, 30 minutes for a diesel once a week. And then it goes into like special hazard and high rise, but uh, his answer about the windings in the motor is absolutely correct. That's awesome. Chris still needs to know what is the bourbon of choice. Chris still needs to know what is the bourbon of choice. 
Uh, I'm, this is going to make me look really bad, but I'm, I've had this bottle for a while and it's almost gone. Uh, so don't think I drank this whole thing tonight, but Ezra. <laughs> Ezra Brooks. So I'll I tell you what is not the bourbon of choice. I went to a bourbon factory in Chattanooga. There's only one. Yeah. But they're not. Terrible. Not the, choice. the worst ever. Love which, the angle well, wrench. Which one was for it? tight spots? It's in Chattanooga, like downtown Chattanooga. I'll send you the, but it is Pantone? boy, Blantons? terrible. Freaking oh, terrible. No, not drinking Blanton's tonight, man. I, I got to say that. Jeremy, That's you got the game. tape, the dope, and the tray, kid. You'll be all right. Wind Supply used to give. Oh, deleted. Delete your comment. Has <laughs> I read it? <laughs> deleted. He deleted it. Like, wait, never mind. Pappy? Pantone Blanton's Pappy. What's Ben talking about, kid? Uh, Pappy Van Winkle. It's some like overpriced freaking bourbon. Oh. And it should only be like two hundred dollars, and I've seen it at places for like a thousand dollars. It's so dumb. Dang. Oh my goodness. So I'm a. Uh, I like. I like old fashions. I'm a big fan of a good old fashioned. Yeah. I'm a I, used to, I used to like some Jameson. Lord over ice. You just got to get some Jameson, kid. It's like 40 bucks for the liter. You could drink the whole liter before bed. You feel like a champ. Wake up the next day, piss some vinegar, and go to work. That's what Bobby, I did for this is, Bobby, this, this handle yeah. is $25. Boom. <laughs> Handles were tough. I couldn't. I couldn't usually get through the entire handle. I'm a night. pump guy. I'm broke. I don't have money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh shit! Which gun up there is your favorite? The top one. Uh, the top one. or the old one? Which one's the this oldest? one? This is my new one. My new hunting rifle. Mm. Um, I got it the day before uh, opening day of uh, gun season for deer. Um. Went to the range, spent about 15 minutes sighting it in. The very next morning, I was at uh, deer camp and plugged one at 150 yards, dropped dead in her tracks. So Boom. that's my new favorite right now. Wow. Nice. What caliber is that? Um, that is a uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. Oh, okay. Is it a Kimber? Or... No. That looks like um, the pattern. No, uh, it is a. Um... Chris, you like salty dogs? Yes. Yeah. Who <laughs> asked? That? that must have been uh, that must have been somebody from Texas that asked that. <laughs> volt. <laughs> the zero zero volt. Chris likes drinking salty dogs. Don't get him lying. <laughs> zero zero volt. Uh, it, you gotta love when they have names or you don't know who they are. Vincent, one glass of twenty three was two hundred. Damn, you're doing it wrong, kid. Yeah, no, he's not wrong. No, he's I, not wrong at all. There's bars. Yeah, but that will charge you two, three hundred dollars an ounce for Pappy. It's freaking ridiculous. And to be honest, like oh. the whole mystique of it is that it's hard to get, and that's why mm. they they mark the price up. But it's okay. It's not great. Is it really uh, hard to get, though? Yeah, it's very hard to get. Hmm. See, I was close. I got uh, zero zero volt is from Arkansas. That's like right there. So salty dog is it is. Uh, there's yeah. a sal there's a salty dog in Worcester. And salty dogs it. are good. I got introduced to one by what? Uh, so what is it? Out in Texas. What is it? What is that? I can't remember what all's in it. It was good. Oh, oh I thought it was a place. So we uh. No, it's a drink. Like a hot dog. Salty dog. Oh, a drink. A yeah. It was a bar called Salty Dogs in Worcester, and they had a mechanical bull, and that was the spot to be, kid. Oh, dude, I I dislocated <laughs> my shoulder on a freaking mechanical bull. Oh, what? Oh my god. Was the bull scared. okay? Uh, no, it's my <laughs> fault. I was being a prick to the guy controlling it. I was like, I was like, how come you let all these girls go in there and they just, oh, and as soon as the guy goes on, you want to turn up the heat? I was like, seems like a dick move, and he goes, all right, I got you. <laughs> I got you. Bam. I drank that shit all the way up. Like I made, I went, what, what? And then just. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Weller is great. Buffalo Trace. Brian and I like the rye. Old fashions is bussin. Ben That's Brown right. missed it. Matthew Dunn. Make sure you're. Make sure you sight in your guns. It's good. Grapefruit. Drews, I do believe that if you're gonna get an old fashioned, it needs to be a rye whiskey. The, the I just think it's better. It's a little sweeter. Guns 
this is a dig at me because I went to Matt Dunn's hunting pro property and didn't properly sight in my gun and I uh, missed a deer shot high on it. Um, so he's, he's fucking making fun. Thanks, Matt. I'm, I'm buying Tornatec from now on. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, bro. Yo, Brian, what up? Brian Brito. Bobby is the youngest OG in the industry. I heard he once piped an entire 32-story high-rise by himself with nothing but an 8-inch and a plumb bob. <laughs> what's up, brother? I miss you. Matt knows what's up. He's bought me a few. <laughs> zero, zero volt. Who are you, bro? Oh, shit. I built a whole high-rise with that 8-inch kid. <laughs> Do it. Do it, son. <laughs> Thanks for that line is legendary. It's gonna live forever. Oh, shit, I uh, I forget. It was an old guy. Bob Henley told me that. That's all you need, kid. This is all you need. It's just an eight inch. You can build this whole place. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me get one. <laughs> so that I mean, so that I don't understand the lag because I the, I didn't change the internet. We just went live again. Then it's like then it's good. Then it's not good. Whatever. Fucking. I need yeah, a uh, I need like a little what are like the little things you add to your cell phone plan for like fifty bucks and you just like carry five G around in your pocket and put it anywhere you want. Aaron, bro. god damn it! Oh, what is that? The Aaron, you know Aaron? Yeah, Aaron Couch. He said AK. I assumed he meant freaking uh, Arkansas. That's my rep out in Texas. No wonder he said salty dog. It's his favorite drink. Salty dog. It's his favorite. <laughs> Hey, Aaron Couch is the fucking man. That dude's gonna take the world by storm selling fire pumps. That yeah. dude is a selling freaking machine. Let's go. That's awesome. That's that's pretty cool. Thank you for joining. Love that guy. Thank you for commenting. Fucking love that guy. Hey, what is your opinion on with fire pumps with loops and meters and then testing from the meter? All right. And um, once again, I got to give a shout out to Justin Stallings. If you go to his Instagram, that's Atlantic Fire Controls. He actually has a video on this where – he was testing a fire pump and he had the hose monster outside and it, obviously he's getting an accurate reading from the hose monster outside. And he went back inside to show the flow meter on the flow meter line loop. And uh, yeah, Justin can correct me. I, I'm, I may be uh, embellishing this, but I want to say it was like a hundred to 200 GPM off from what the hose monster Whoa. was reading. Mm. Yeah. I don't like flow meters. I think they're the dumbest thing. I, when I see them in specifications, I usually try to take exception to it, but there's certain municipalities and states that require it because you're not allowed to flow and discharge water outside. Like California, they're really big on flow meters. Ha in that's happening in Boston. In particular, um, uh, Vanderbilt University in Tennessee uh, near Nashville, they uh, their hospital – their hospital system they have uh throughout the campus like 30 something fire pumps and they're testing them all the time you, if you're going to discharge water you have to do it at like three four o'clock in the morning because they can't interrupt uh hospital traffic or anything like that i like when the chat gets all wild they don't, they don't oh, like shit. talking about flow meters either ben says here we go <laughs> Aaron, Jer here we go. Jeremy, meter screw guy. flow meters. Aaron, screw flow meters. J Justin, Aaron's a big flow meter guy. <laughs> <laughs> they suck and nobody calibrates them. He's not wrong. Vincent's right again, man. Nobody ever calibrates him. We put, I've, I can only, the only experience I have is installing a brand new one and uh, they forced us. We had to put it in because they wanted to, they got like this big green, like in Boston you get like green you put a special unit on the roof, you get like a great, like a little bit more green, and then you get like special windows, and it's green. And we were like recycling the sprinkler water out of the tank, through the flow meter, back into the tank, and you could flow water without it. And it was like a big green, like you were you were saving the environment. And uh, I mean, it was brand new. We put it in, it it worked, it matched. We flew water, we 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 flowed outside, and we flowed inside. I don't know. I was looking. I, I was looking at it. It was say, right on there. <clears throat> Bobby, I do have to say one thing though about flow meters, hmm. and it's only because my bestie's on the chat right now. Okay. Who? <laughs> yeah. What? Go ahead. Justin Stallings, who's the Tornatech rep. If you have to buy a flow meter, you should buy it from Tornatech. <laughs> and I was I was skeptical until I saw it in action. It is a lot more accurate than a Venturi style flow meter where you just have that gauge bouncing, it's essentially a float. 
in a tube and the water level rises in it, it does right. stay pretty still, but I still hate them. I still don't, I, it, it's not, it should not be an acceptable means of testing a fire pump. Hmm. If you're trying to get a general idea of how much water you're flowing, fine. But for recorded measurements of fire pump testing, I do not believe it should be allowed. Unfortunately, NFPA says differently. Jeremy Buck says we calibrate them at Cintas and it's cheaper to buy a new one. <laughs> so I've wrong? never seen one is calibrated. It, wh how, I've never seen a sticker. How ever. much how much is a how much is a flow meter? I mean and how much you it, can generally get them uh anywhere from like five hundred to a thousand dollars. It costs it's more, more to calibrate than... it? Well, like think can. about shipping. Oh you well, know? you gotta have them. You gotta pay the labor and in yeah. Yeah, if you don't have like in Georgia, we've got a, a place pretty much right down the street from our shop that does calibration. They actually do all the calibration checks for Glock, um, and they're right down the street from us, so it's not a problem in Georgia. But other states aren't aren't so lucky; they don't have quick access to to calibration services gvi that's the one that that's the one that i use it was on a uh, yeah global vision it was on a patterson pump that's right global vision is is the main um there's them and uh garand those are kind of two of the main but global vision is the only one that we purchase only time a flow meter can be trusted is the first time it's tested period unless it's calibrated regularly which unicorns will fly out of my butt before that happens <laughs> <laughs> guys, love Aaron, dude. guys that worked with me prior would remove the whole flow meter instead of just the gauge and they would put a filler piece of pipe while the meter is out first time i seen it i was cracking up cost about eight to nine hundred by the time i send it out and my labor hours yeah yeah he's not wrong i'm shocked that that number is only eight to nine hundred because I wasn't even taking into account labor. So, right, you were yeah. just taking in the cut. Yeah, the cost of the of a new one. I mean, to, like I, I don't know if you guys know, but like a lot of sprinkler contractors, uh, their labor burden is can be it can fluctuate state to state. But I know here in the southeast, it can be. And Ben, correct me if I'm wrong. Ben Brown would know oh, yeah. this better than I do. Uh, between like sixty and eighty dollars an hour when you account for like insurance and all that other stuff. Right, right. So, uh, and you know, very rarely is a sprinkler man going to be by himself. Um, you, you're going to have somebody with you. If it's a crew, if it's an install crew, you probably have three to four somebody's with you. So you calculate that labor burden per hour per person. Man, that shit, that cost goes up immensely. So if you're tip, if you're talking about a crew of like four guys. With labor burden, typically, like I know Georgia labor burdens with pretty much every uh, company. Um, now, if it's they're typically around like hold on one forty five, one thirty five, one forty five here in Georgia. Time I up. mean, you multiply that by three. I mean, by four. I mean, that's a lot. Why? Why what? would we ever send four guys though to do one like? Well, no, like if, if you're on a new, new construction. Install. Oh, oh, if you're oh, on a yeah. new install. Oh, I and you. like, say, say you're on a new install, you've installed the flow meter and something was wrong with it and you got to send it back. Now you got to take it apart. Oh, I got you. And then send it back and then receive it back and then reinstall it. And you're yeah, still, but still, you only have guys two guys that's still, that's what, $270 an hour. Yeah. And then that if you're doing, if you're going anywhere, you have a truck charge, which is probably going to be around $100, $110 an hour. Boom! I'm so sending. I'm that... sending JB solo, dog. It's it's a it's a six inch uh fucking flow meter. JB's got that shit by himself. Let's save a little bit of money. Send another guy somewhere else. Huh? But then, uh, let me ask you this, because <clears throat> I don't, I don't, I, I'm a manufacturer, and I only know so much about sprinkler contractors' business. Um, is there a minimum charge on service? Most most times, yeah. So what what's that like one to two hours something like that? Yeah, I worked uh, I worked at a company where it was two hours minimum, four hours minimum, but like I usually would do like Bobby rule eight hour minimum. So if it's a two well, man, that's job, because you're billing, bro. So if it. you're doing a job, it's it's never less than two hours. Two yeah, hour if minimum. It's a two man always. job, and a minimum of two hours. It's say you're right. Say it's you know. I see. Um, One hundred and thirty dollars an hour. That can get expensive. Two thirty-five yeah. an hour. Union has three guys to replace a flow switch. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. Easy, JB. Easy. I won't leave the shop for anything less than 350 Fuck yeah, kid. <laughs> I'm playing. Hey, startup guys, listen. Two hours. Since, since I'm on here, since we're talking about pumps, and since there's some startup guys on here, I, I want to address this because there's also sprinkler contractors on here. And uh, my poor friend Ben has been victim to this before. But you get called for a startup, right? They'll call you. And, and startup guys, man, it's a thin industry. There's not that many of them. And so when you schedule a startup with a startup rep, you know, they're expecting you to be ready when they get there. So if they get there and there's problems with the job, the water hasn't been turned on or hooked up. The electricity hasn't been turned on or hooked up. There's all kinds of problems with pipe configuration, stuff not meeting NFPA, things like that. Dad's not poor. You have to leave. You get charged. Then, And guys don't understand this, that like if, the, if they have to show up, regardless if they pull a single tool out of the truck, you're getting charged for that. Again. You are getting charged for that. And I'm one of the biggest proponents of it. And I feel these phone calls every day with customers they are like, well, he didn't do anything. He just showed up. Um, if yeah. he didn't have to go to your job, he could have gone to somebody else's job Fuck and yeah. made money. So you're going to pay for it regardless. Yep. And I, I never understood the animosity with startup guys of like, oh, I can't believe you gave me such crap. It's like, bro, uh, that that's not fair. You you can't you can't just shit on the startup guy because you weren't ready. But normally it's not the sprinkler contractor's fault. Too often I've found it's not. It can be. But a lot of times, like, the electrician said he was going to be ready. He's like, oh, my guys are going to stay late. And they're going to make sure everything's hooked up. Mm -hmm. And then they, they didn't. They they didn't. But. I can, weigh, I can weigh in on this. You kind of hit everything perfectly. But um, the last the last one that I did at the hospital, the electricians weren't ready. The generator the generator power wasn't ready. But I was completely ready. We had normal power and I was ready to do my test and I had to do my test that day to proceed and make my deadlines. And yeah. the, the electrician just had to pay for that that additional yeah, trip because you only get one trip. And and you got to another thing guys don't understand is that, that you know people like Justin and 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 probably Ben is there. They probably drove 3 4 5 hours to get to you. <laughs> and you don't if even you have concrete Justin's under the page, you'll hear it. Be yeah. like, I drove six hours for this shit. <laughs> Aaron's, Aaron's is even worse. So Aaron's our rep in Texas, uh, hydroelectric. Um, and so he sells the pumps, but he also does his own startup and service. But he covered, he's in Dallas, which is about as far northeast as you can get in freaking Texas. And he covers the entire state and sometimes beyond. So, like, he'll have guys that, like, may have to drive an entire day to get to a site. So, if it's not right, you know, he's just burned a guy for an entire day, maybe even two guys. It depends on the on the complexity of the site. So, it, it's, it can get really fucked up. And, you know, I hear it from him. Justin will call me. And there's certain contractors that I deal with that Justin will be like, Please don't ask me to start up another one of their pumps ever again. These guys <laughs> fucking suck. They don't know what they're doing. And I'm like, I'll have to talk them off a ledge and be like, come on, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'll pay you more on the next one. Any one of theirs that comes up, I'll give you some more money. And, you know, sometimes it'll be okay. But even with startup guys, like money's not necessarily their motivator. If you're a pain in the ass to deal with and you don't know what you're doing, installing a fire pump. There's guys across the country that will be like, I'm not touching your work. It's dangerous. You don't know what you're doing. It's dangerous. And it, it's very dangerous. I mean, right. I we, did a, uh, we did a witness test today at our facility. Um, and we tried, I'm not going to drop names of brands, but we tried out a brand of brew couplings. This was a package system, a pre-engineered, fully skidded system, all the piping, all the wiring and everything. And we wanted to try the uh, um, this new brand. We were going to give them a shot. We got to 145 PSI during the, the run test. And the bolt on the groove coupling sheared off 
and blew out the coupling and shot across the room and almost hit my customer. Whoa. I mean, like it, it could have been detrimental to my business. And we immediately replaced everything with Vic couplings. But I mean, it could have been really bad. Like, yeah, that that's, like I've, bad, only, bad. I've only seen bolts on, on a, a groove coupling break. No, Ben, times. I'm not talking about superhero. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Always FaceTime your startup guy days before the startup. That's very good advice. As a startup I'll guy, you, you should probably I'll FaceTime the, 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 that was like my biggest fear is having them come out. And I wasn't like 100% ready. I can remember just like going over everything. Like, is this done? Is that make sure everything is ready? Um, we had an issue also with the helipad where we, when you do, we had to t set the foam off the AFFF and we had to take a, uh, it was test foam and buddy flew out from wherever he flew out from and had to get a sample. And yeah. we were looking, uh, we were looking for the 3% sample and it took like two weeks to get the test back and it came back at 2.7. And now that's not my fault. And the, I don't know, that's not the helipad guy's fault, but the GC had to pay for another trip for him to come out and do the test again. So we could get the the three percent. I don't know. I was, I was yeah. very very confused with that. But that's yeah, like I mean, another type you of startup. These these startup guys a lot of times are one and two man operations. You know, this is this is all that they do um, is service and startup. So when we waste their time, it's not like they're just like, oh, it's okay. I got another million dollars sitting in the bank and other jobs. It's like. They're having to tell somebody else, another sprinkler contractor that actually is ready. They're having to tell them no so that they can waste their time at your job. And it, it just sucks, man. Like, And then we deal with it on the pump side because they'll call us and they're like, hey, man, we had to walk off the job site today. And then the sprinkler <laughs> contractor calls us and says, hey, man, we weren't quite ready today. We need to get you to reschedule it. So me and my guys got like five and six phone calls going around. So it, it doesn't just affect the job. It affects a lot of other people down the line. And, you know, that's why we have a pre-startup checklist that we try to send out to people and get them to fill it out. Uh, a lot of times they'll just look at it and be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I know what I'm doing. But Yeah, I've done this before. Don't tell me how to do my job. Justin, I've been doing this for 30 years. Just, ain't, no, ain't no real punk. No, no, I no, never no, did that no. one time. Neither did my granddaddy. Justin's oh, no. The biggest thing they'll tell us, and <laughs> Justin knows this. Justin and some of these other startup guys send me pictures all the time. They'll set the pump on all thread and not even build the housekeeping pad. And oh, yeah. Start up, and they go, What's the matter with you? Why can't you start this up? Man, I remember back in 19, uh, 1847, <laughs> something, it started this pump, and oh, you, know, you dumb some bitch. And I'm like, Just, fuck out of here. They'll call me and they'll be like, they're like, Chris, what do you think? I go, walk off the job now. You're getting paid by me. Walk off the job. Boom. We're not yeah. start, I won't put their 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 safety in danger. I think I think one of the last ones Justin went to wasn't even on like five ace rod. It was on like three ace rod. <laughs> they, were all, <laughs> they were all fucking. <laughs> and so when you were talking about uh, sending and telling Chris, I'll pay. Chris says Justin says, and Chris still sells them sells to them again. <laughs> Whatever they pay on time. Leave me alone, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> so what oh, is shit. Uh, when it comes to to. The uh, the startup guys, right? Those guys that do the pumps, do the startups. What, from your perspective, what is the life of one of those? Because there's not many. So, as a career, like, what is what does that look like from your experience? Well, I know you're looking from the outside. I mean, but... you you got Will's Lacrosse here in Georgia that's been doing it since the 1700s. That motherfucker oh. has forgotten oh, more than yeah. any of us will ever know about fire protection. Um. I, I don't even know how old he is at this point, but um, there was another guy uh, when I first came in the industry about 20 years ago, um, there was a, a gentleman that I went out on the road with that is still doing pump tests to this day and he's blind. He's in his 90s and he's blind and he'll reach <laughs> into controllers and know where to feel like he'll feel around the box and still like, but you kind of have to direct him. Um, whoa, but you know, there's a lot of young guys coming up, uh, right now. Um, Tony Carden, who's mentioned in the chat, he just branched off and started doing his own thing. Um, 
Yeah, Jack Hatch. Uh, he did it for 39 years with with Aaron's dad. Uh, you know, I, I'm starting to hear a lot more of guys retiring, but you know, there's guys that'll do it for 30, 40, 50 years if their body's still working and they can flow <laughs> water. Because here's the great thing about startup guys, they'll show up to the job site like a straight up pimp and they'll find yeah. a greenhorn on the job site. They'll one of the helpers and they'll be like, Hey bitch, why don't you get my hose out of the truck and unroll it for me? And then once the flow test is done, they'll be like, hey, bitch, how about you go ahead and roll up my hose for me? So their backs are fine. They don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Al, yeah. says, Al says we use them on occasion. He's for sure blind. <laughs> <laughs> Wills is yeah. awesome. I want to be a startup yeah, he, guy. Al, but I can't Al knows who out. I'm talking about. Yeah. Al knows exactly who I'm talking about because he's here in the A with me. I want to be a startup guy but can't figure out where not start. Yo, JB, what so, up? What, what do you want to do? Just saying, where to stop? Like, if you wanted to be a startup guy, what what kind of steps you need to do to get on that path? Well, um, I mean, most startup guys either come from the pump industry itself, or have aligned themselves with other startup guys and then branch off. Like, I've got a guy down in South Florida. Um, he was actually an architect by degree. Um, and then went into pumps working for another startup guy and learn the craft, learn the controllers, learn the engines, the motors, the pumps, and then branched off on his own. I know uh, Justin, for, for instance, Justin Stallings, at one point was my competitor in the Carolinas. He worked for uh, another pump rep and another packager. So he came up that way, learning about pumps, learning about controls, learning about the systems. And then finally was able to branch off and link himself to another seasoned pump guy and controls guy. So, uh, and, and, and since those two linked up, I mean, they're the superpower in the Carolinas that like, you can't touch their company. Atlantic fire controls is the tops in the Carolinas. Um, but you, you gotta do, you gotta go through the steps, right? You gotta, um, like Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Couch grew up in the industry. His dad had been the Aurora rep for, and he can correct me, I don't know, 30, 40 years. So he grew up as a, as a child learning about pumps. Um, and that's sometimes how it happened. Me, I just fell into the industry in my early twenties and worked my way up from being a, a floor sweeper at, at, at SPP. Look at to, you, kid, from sweeping the you know, floors. That's impressive. Building pumps, testing pumps, all that stuff. Like, it, it it's a very weird industry to get to. You, you kind of just fall into it, 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 to be honest. He's in Florida. But if you're trying Justin. to get into it on your own, I would say find your local pump rep and ask him if he's, if he's hiring. If you're a sprinkler guy, he, he, this is what I'll tell you this. If you're a sprinkler contractor, if you're a sprinkler contractor, I would ask your boss to link you up with whoever your pump guy is and say, hey, can I spend a couple weeks on the road with our pump guy? Can I go and help them on job sites, do pump tests and all that stuff so I become better at doing annuals? That's so a great I idea. Better at doing flow testing and all that. That's what I was at. Find your local pump guy and just lock into him and say, hey, man, can I come do a couple job sites with you? I won't wear my company's t-shirt. I'll, wear I'll just come out and hang out. That's a great idea. The shadow, the shadow thing always works pretty good. Justin, um, JB is in Florida. <clears throat> Put him on, dog. Put him on. He could be your, he could be your, uh, your guy down in the south, your pump guy in the south, kid. I don't know if you, I don't know if you're linked up with him on Instagram, but um, JB's one that's posting all the time. I'll link you guys up if you're not. <laughs> It's been a good episode, despite the lag and the, you know. Yeah, we uh, we had some trouble in the beginning, but it we're it back. Ended up we're back, kid. You know. Good and the more hey, I uh, did, the ben less Brown. lag came on. Ben Brown. <laughs> ben Brown commented. But hey, Chris, ben man, Brown. thank you so much for coming on last minute. We really appreciate. It. I love talking to you, man. I want yeah, you to come on every my episode. Boys, man. I'll Hell always yeah. be here for you. Hell yeah, kid. We love hey, you. Hey, uh, Bobby, did Brian send you your SBP shirt? No, no, that's for he no, probably yeah. he probably he gave it to, to Sarah. No, 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 no. Wait, I have his, I have his, uh, his level, his shirt, 
he has to come to dinner with me. Yeah, I made sure to give you level two, bro. <laughs> yeah. you, you fucked me, Chris. You fucked me. You know? I'm so sorry. You could have just I'm mailed so it, guy. <laughs> I would have paid for the no, postage. Just, you have to come to dinner, Bobby. All right. Okay. Come to dinner. When are you moving? I'm moving in uh, mid-May. Mid-May. All right. I'm not going to help, with, I'm not gonna help with the seen, move, but I want to see the new place. Have you seen Chad's new digs down in fucking St. Augustine? Hell yeah. Oh, man. It's I had dinner, nice. I had dinner down there on uh, Monday. Uh, Homie's posting, see? and I'm like, I'm jealous as hell. I'm like, well, I, went to dinner, I went up. to dinner at your house, Brian. I went to dinner at your house. The, yeah. first, the first time you invited me, kid, I said, yes, sir, I'll be there. I showed up with a smile, and I ate. It was great. I loved it. Thank you so much. You came because then, you like, had to then because I, everybody like, else did. You know, I'm in Kentucky. You're like, hey, kid, you know, if you got any spare time, come on by. We'll make you some uh, – No, rap- no, rap- you were in what Gainesville. Are they called? Rapists? You were in Gainesville. You we'll make you some came. rapists, kid. Come on down. Gainesville's like a f- two hours from Atlanta with traffic, brother. No, it's one hour. It's like an hour and ten at, at when I get out at five in Gainesville. And to I get a good to, home cooked And then meal. I would have been in I would have been in my dirty jeans and my sweaty clothes and then I would have and, and then I would have had to by the time I got back to my hotel room it had been a 17 hour day. But it would have been a great you meal. You could have just stayed with me. Oh man. I'm only 45 that's, minutes in the morning. That just sounds so lovely. I really should have done that. Hey, <sighs> um <laughs> especially new spot. The new spot's legit. No, dude. I want to check out the Do I have my own room at the new spot? Yeah, oh yeah. Chad oh, yeah. got me Chad got me my own room and shit, so you stay with him? Really? No. <laughs> you would have been pissed. <laughs> Justin, I'll be hey, a helper Chris, for man. free Thank you so if much I can get your on. knowledge. Hell yeah. Chris, make sure these boys come to Bob McCullough Golf Tourney. Yo, I want to get in on the golf tournaments, bro. Can I hey, use your old the, clubs? That's, Bobby, yeah. that's the, uh, the Georgia Fire Sprinkler Association uh, golf tournament. When? Where? When How do I go? That? I'm it's not. usually in the fall. It's usually like October time frame. Uh, I'm I'm looking at the site right now. They haven't posted the date. Uh, I'm on actually the board of uh, directors. Boom. So, um, but we haven't we haven't come up with a date yet. What's good with clubs? What's good with clubs? Where do I get you clubs? Said it's the Georgia Fire Sprinkler Association. Yeah, it's the Georgia chapter of AFSA. Oh, rent them. Okay, I like that shit. Boom. Can nice you get me in that? Like... Huh? Can you get me in that? Of course I can. Yeah. Can we right. get us Help in? me in. I want to be in there. I'm I provide not. all the alcohol for the event. Oh, nice. That's it. Get them all sauced up. I want. Can I Can I do some filming out there? Absolutely. Can, can you, you get can. people sauced up and then I can be like, hey, man, you know, how'd you make it to where you are in the industry? If you have one word of advice for an 18-year-old apprentice, let me hear it. Dude, we do a cool. really cool thing out there. We do a, a All South Sprinkler, which is a sprinkler contractor in Georgia. These guys have retarded money, but they also own their own helicopter. So (laughs) uh, the helicopter pilot is actually a sprinkler guy. Um, He got sober over, I think it's like 11 years now. He got sober and needed to do something with his hands, so he became a pilot. So at the GFSA tournament every year, they take their helicopter and him and I get in the helicopter after the round of golf and we have a bucket of golf balls and they're all numbered and we fly over the course to one of the greens and everybody buys like raffle tickets and it gives them a number for that golf ball and we drop them. And if yours goes in the hole, then you win the money. Wow. It's, it's a lot of fun, man. Oh, it's, that's sick. it's so much fun. I got the luck. I got the luck of the Irish. I'm going to win that shit. Invite me. Brian, talk to me. Ben, ben, Brian, we have better ben swagger. Said superhero. Superhero. We have better swagger. John, John um, from Georgia Backlog. Yeah, Ben Chris Brown's Williams. on the board of directors, too. Let hey, me ben, know I'll see you on Wednesday. For the golf, court, for the golf tournament. We will come. John wants to come to the golf tournament, too, Chris. Let's go. Georgia Backflow. I definitely want to get into those. Um, I'm not, like, into golf. I never even thought that I would be I got golfer. you, bro. I want to be just there just me to where meet you the people. Go. I, I don't know. I want to be like, – I don't want to go to every golf thing. I just want to go to the big, sick ones that all the hot shots are at, whatever ones you go to. So, I'll tell you this. This is my my, my one um, – I wanted to go to the one Janine just went to with Carlos. No. It's too late for you guys this year, and I should have thought about it sooner and had you guys down. Uh, this is my one pitch. I'm not going to you – know, I'm not a really pitchy guy, but – um, every year, uh, SPP, we started our own charity when I was in Afghanistan back in 2000, uh, 
2011? Yeah, 2011, 2010, somewhere in that time frame. Um, called the Heroes First Foundation. And it's a veterans and first responders uh, foundation that uh, we, as a business, because we have all these contacts with sprinkler contractors and, um, you know, other business partners, we can raise a lot of money. And so we found charities that needed help raising money. And one in particular is the Pause for Vets. Pause for Vets uh, raises dogs, service dogs, for first responders and uh, military veterans that suffer from PTSD and other physical ailments. So May 10th at Chateau Alon Golf and Country Club here in Georgia, um, this is our 15th annual golf tournament. We usually have that's sick between 250 and 300 golfers. Um, Justin, Ben, and uh, Aaron will be at this event, um, it, and we usually raise a uh, hundred thousand dollars and more for these charities. And so this year we've taken on uh, the Cherokee County Homeless Veterans Foundation that provides housing for homeless veterans, and then um, also this year. Uh, you may have heard of Folds of Honor. Um, uh, they're throughout all the quick trips, and they have a big NASCAR race every year. Uh, we've linked up with those guys. But um, my boss and I started this charity 15 years ago and have raised well over a million dollars over those 15 years to help support first responders, uh, firefighters. We invite firefighters, <clears throat> police, EMS, veterans, to this event they get to play eat and drink for free you get super fat at this event because we have so much food throughout the course that's we awesome. buy tons of alcohol and uh normally i'm in this big jacked up side by side uh mm -hmm. riding around the course with a cooler full of alcohol force feeding people shots and and <laughs> beers and whatnot and ben knows i've force fed him a few um but it's just a great time. We throw a huge reception the night before, um, and it's all industry professionals. Most of the people are there are sprinkler contractors, uh, people like Ferguson, Coramine, Viking, Reliable, Arco. Uh, well, I don't know if Arco's involved, but they could be. That's cool. Not a sponsor they could be. They're yet. Not yet. Um, they could be. But, uh, you know, it's all industry professionals. So it's like another industry uh, event but you know what the money is going to. And it's just, it's such an awesome, awesome thing that we've been involved in. I've been so blessed to be involved with it. Um, I, I can't say enough about it. It's a passion project for my boss and I, and we get to get all of our friends together. We, yeah, we get man. to have all of our friends together for, for a day and just have fun. And I don't play in the event. Like I said, I ride around just so I get to hang out with everybody and just have fun with my friends. Boom. So I want to be, um, I want to be in your cart. So I could be, you're going to be force feeding and I'm going to be force filming. Boom. Force that's filming. Right, people, that's right. That's huh? right. This is the first year since its inception that I'm missing because I'm deployed. Um, I missed the first year because I was in Afghanistan um, and it was planned while I was in Afghanistan. And this is, at the 15th year, the 15th anniversary, I'm missing it because I'll be deployed. Oh, wow. So it's, um, it, it's bittersweet for me. My wife is still going to go on behalf of me and take care of people, take care of the veterans, and, and just make sure everybody has a good time. Yeah, man. Bravo to you guys. That's a lot of money to raise. That's something uh, you should be very proud of. Thank you. Um, uh, that That's that's pretty cool to hear. Um. That's an hour. That's it. That's over an hour on the on the second live here. Bobby, that was the Buddy Doer Golf Ski Classic in Orlando. Yes, that's the one I want to go to. American yes. Backflow. What did Bobby, I say? Bobby, you got to go to that. That's Brian, I, you need to go to that, that also. Yeah, next year. I want to. I wanted to go this year. Oh, um, that is an it awesome was, It was event. too late. I want to go uh, next year. Some, someone, I'll make sure that both of you guys get the information on that. Yeah. I'm very close with okay. the organizer. Get me there, dog. Whatever we got to do. What do you need me to do? What do we have to do? Lorella is the best. We're looking for a fourth in our team for Chris's tournament. He's talking about. Damn, Justin. Damn, Justin. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on that, but then I'm gonna be leaving Brian hanging. I don't know. <laughs> Brian and I suck. Could we count? We could we could count as one. I'll bring hey, my whoa, whoa, whoa. to the I charity play. event. 
Yeah, right. I kid. play Bobby. I don't know what you do. I can hit a ball, kid, and I can hit it straight. But like, oh, I just don't. I want to be what Chris is doing, riding the golf cart and fucking with everybody, and you know, <laughs> drive by you and throw a fart bomb, and then go talk to somebody important and and make a video. You know, that's what I'm into. Yeah. The, my best experience golfing was at uh, my buddy's uh, on my on his wedding day, and uh, you know, driving the cart's the best part. It's the best part of golf, driving that it's car, fun. man. It is fun. It really is. All right, everybody. Thank you for uh, putting up with us. And we stayed on extra late today because the first live kind of lagged out or whatever. But yeah. we appreciate you guys for sticking through. Thank you, as always. Please hit the like button before you leave. And if you haven't, hit the subscribe button. Chris, thank you. Thank you for bringing all your friends. Anyone thank who came here. Thank you so much, Chris. To support yeah, Chris my boy. Support us. Thank you so much, Ben and Volt. Um, you know, a few, we've seen a few um, new names in here. John, great talk today. From American Backflow. Thank you. We'll be looking forward to that show on May 30th. We're going to have American Backflow on here. Justin, add my guy. Chance, I'll call you tomorrow. All right, everybody. Brian, Chris, have a great day.